Welcome back, America, to Sound Retirement Radio, where we bring you concepts, ideas, and strategies designed to help you achieve clarity, confidence, and freedom as you prepare for and transition through retirement. And now, here is your host, Jason Parker. America, welcome back to another round of Sound Retirement Radio. So glad to have you tuning into this episode. The title of this episode is Lump Sum versus Pension. A common question we receive is whether it's better to choose the lump sum or the pension. And in today's podcast, I want to give you several things to think about, several things that we look at when we're helping people make this decision about whether to take a lump sum or a pension. In addition to the questions and the framework for making this decision, I created a video that we include in the show notes to show you how we use a spreadsheet in conjunction with the retirement budget calculator to help us examine the decision about whether to take a pension or a lump sum. So be sure to visit soundretirementplanning.com, click on episode number 403. If you wanna watch the video that I created that goes along with the audio from this podcast. Of course, all articles, links, and resources mentioned in today's show can also be found in episode number 403. Okay, so before we get started, let's start out by renewing our mind. First John 4.18 says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. And then something fun for the grandkids. Why did the cookie go to the doctor? Because it felt crummy. (laughs) Before we get into the topic of lump sum versus annuity, I went out to play pickleball a few Saturdays ago, and we're having this beautiful sunny weather here in Washington State. And as I was getting ready to play that day, I I glanced down at my backpack and I had spray on sunscreen that I keep in my bag. And I thought to myself, I should probably put some of this on. But I was so excited to start playing that I zipped up my backpack and went straight to the pickleball. After about 30 minutes of playing, I could feel the hot sun on my skin. And I thought to myself, I should really put on some sunscreen. But once again, I decided to ignore that thought and I just kept on playing. Well, there was a slight breeze that day, and the play was fun and competitive, so I just kept on playing, and I ended up playing for like three hours. When I got home that afternoon, I was burnt to a crisp. It was a really bad sunburn, and I paid the price with pain and eventually peeling skin. And as I was thinking about it, I realized how frequently we can be aware of what we should do. But even when we know it would result in favorable outcome, we tend to delay or we make poor decisions by neglecting that little inner voice of wisdom. I've heard it said that the great aim of education is not knowledge, but action. It's one thing to know what to do. It's another thing to do what you know needs to be done. And I can see this same type of behavior when it comes to our finances. So let me just ask you, is there anything you know that you should have done but have not done yet as it relates to your finances? And let me just encourage you, listen to that small internal voice. Do what you need to do so that you can avoid getting burned. When it comes to deciding on a lump sum versus annuity, here are some things to consider. First, let me define and clarify these words. Pension is a regular payment that's made to you during your retirement. And basically, it's a transfer of risk that guarantees that your income is going to last as long as you live. A pension income from corporations is typically a fixed amount that does not increase with inflation and that can be guaranteed for life. There's typically a formula that's used to determine how much the pension will be, and it's typically a percentage of your income that is determined by your years of service and the age at which you retire. The alternative is a lump sum distribution or rollover, and that is a dollar amount that may be rolled over into your retirement account, and it's an investment that you need to manage. Many employers will give you the option of either taking a one-time lump sum payment or the pension income guaranteed for life. One of the first things you're going to want to do is to request a benefit estimate from your employer. Most employers will give you the formula for estimating your income, and some provide online calculators for making the estimate. But when you're really serious about crunching the numbers, it'd be good to reach out to your HR department and request a benefit estimate. If you're considering taking the pension from your company, one thing you're going to want to do is examine the financial strength of your employer's pension plan. Look at the annual report that's provided by your pension plan, and the general guideline is to expect the report to say that your pension plan is at least 80% funded. The next thing you're going to want to do is consider your life expectancy and any health issues. So write down the ages of your grandparents and your parents, and then any major health issues that you've had. 
look at the Social Security Administration's uh, life expectancy tables and the Society of Actuaries calculator for estimating life expectancy. And I'll include links to both of these resources in the show notes. But having some idea about your health, your family history, and your longevity will help you make a more informed choice between the pension versus the lump sum. The next question is, will you elect a survivor benefit? Create a retirement plan to better understand the consequences to your surviving spouse if you choose not to take the survivor option on your pension income. Of course, an easy way to do this is in the retirement budget calculator. Simply create one model that shows a survivor annuity and create a second model that does not include survivor benefits. In addition, be sure to take into consideration if there are any other benefits that are lost as a result of not taking the survivorship option, such as will there be lost health insurance? Will your surviving spouse be able to maintain their standard of living if the pension does not continue for his or her lifetime? Will you choose a life annuity or a life and period certain annuity or just a period certain? Annuities typically can guarantee different periods. So a a 10-year period certain annuity would generate more income than a life annuity would, but the 10-year period certain annuity would only last for 10 years and then the income stops. A period certain annuity usually pays regardless of if you're alive. For example, If you die after one year of a 10-year period certain annuity, the income would continue to pay for your beneficiaries for nine years, but it ends at the end of 10 years no matter what. Most people are looking at lifetime income annuity option as a longevity insurance to help protect against living a long time. Sometimes you can blend a period certain annuity and lifetime annuity options. The more options you add to the lifetime annuity payment, the lower the guaranteed income. One important thing to consider is if your pension includes a cost of living adjustment. Most corporate pensions that I've seen do not offer any kind of cost of living adjustment, but if it were to be offered, it really makes the pension option that much more valuable. The next question you're going to want to ask is, what's the payout ratio of the annuity? And the general rule of thumb is that if the payout ratio is greater than 6% when compared to the lump sum to take the annuity. But I'd caution you on this rule of thumb because if you make that kind of decision, you're only looking at the annuity and you're not considering the annuity as part of a comprehensive plan. The plan should drive your decisions, not the payout ratio. The payout ratio is the annual income divided by the lump sum. So for example, let's say you were your pension was going to pay $5,000 per month or $60,000 per year. You would take that $60,000 per year divided by the lump sum offer. In this case, we'll say it's a $1 million lump sum offer, and it would tell you that the payout ratio is 6%. A payout ratio is not a rate of return. Some people try to make it sound like this 6% is a rate of return, which it's not, because the annuity payment is a return of principal as well as a small internal rate of return. To calculate the internal rate of return on the annuity, you would need to know how long it will pay out. The longer you live and collect income payments, the higher the internal rate of return would be. The only way to really calculate the internal rate of return on a life annuity would be to wait until after you died, and then that would be our opportunity to calculate what it would be. But we can make estimates based on life expectancy. I'll have a link uh, to an article in the show notes for a deep dive for anyone who wants to understand more information on payout ratios. It's interesting to note that there is an inverse relationship between interest rates and and the lump sum that you're offered. The lower the interest rate, the higher the lump sum. Typically, for every 1% interest rates decrease, your lump sum would increase by approximately 9%. So let's create a hypothetical scenario to give you some numbers to work with. Let's say Bob is 62 years old, and we'll estimate his life expectancy to be age 82. Bob is being offered a pension that pays $4,000 per month. If the current interest rate environment is 4%, the lump sum might be $660,087, and the payout ratio would be 7.27%. If the interest rate drops to 3%, the lump sum would increase from $660,000 up to $721,000, and the payout ratio would be 6.66%, down from 7.27%. And if the interest rate drops from 4% all the way to 2%, the lump sum would increase from $660,000 up to $790,000, and the payout ratio would drop to 6.07%. The higher the interest rate environment, the lower the lump sum, and the higher the payout ratio. The lower the interest rate environment results in a larger lump sum, but a lower payout ratio. If you take the lump sum 
Will you need life insurance to provide income for your surviving spouse in the event of an early death? If you do need life insurance, can you qualify for life insurance? Will you buy a term life policy or a whole life policy? If the pension has a cost of living adjustment, be sure to consider the amount of insurance that will be needed in future dollars to replace that lost income. If you take the lump sum, will you be comfortable managing your investments? Many people will receive a lump sum that's going to range anywhere from $500,000 to $1 million, but most people don't have any experience managing that kind of an investment. How will you invest it? What rate of return can you expect to earn if you're investing in conservative investments? What's your investment philosophy? I've met a lot of people who have saved a lot, not because they're really great investors, but because they had high income and they just automatically contributed to their 401k. But when it comes to actually knowing how to invest, when to rebalance, what funds to use, where to take withdrawals, and understanding all the tax implications, a lot of people just don't know what the heck they're doing. And they, they make the mistake that they think that because they were a good saver, that that made them a good investor. And that's not always the case. The next question you're going to want to understand is, is your pension covered by the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation? And I'll include a link in the show notes to the maximum coverage available through the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation. And I will also include a link to all the types of pensions that are not protected by the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation. Here are a few of the types of plans that are not covered by the PBGC. Federal, state, local, municipal government pensions, military pensions, Pensions associated with religious institutions, including hospitals and schools with religious affiliation. I've met with pilots in years past that had been burned by bankruptcy and their pension was significantly cut. Many pilots whom we have met with over the years have the option of taking a partial lump sum. Taking the partial lump sum can help avoid the risks of your entire pension not being covered by the PBGC, the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation. And this is one way to reduce the risks associated with the potential for future mismanagement of the airline or just market conditions that could make a big impact on the profit of an airline. Okay, so what are the pros of taking the lump sum? First of all, a lump sum is an investment. It's not an insurance contract. It allows you to have more control over the timing of when income is needed. Taking the lump sum creates opportunities for tax planning as a result of more control over when you realize income. You have the ability to leave remaining funds to your beneficiaries, the ability to increase income over time due to inflation and the performance of your investments, the ability to manage your investments, and taking a lump sum helps reduce the risks of a pension failing or a company filing for bankruptcy and then subsequently having to reduce your future income. What are the negatives with the lump sum? Number one, you're going to need to invest a large sum of money and you may not have experience with that kind of investing. Number two, A report that was recently done by MetLife shows that one-third of people who take the lump sum spend all of the money within five years. Taking the lump sum requires discipline to remain invested and not overspend. Taking the lump sum results in you potentially paying more money in fees to have someone help you manage the investments and then also the fees associated with any funds that you're invested in. Taking the lump sum exposes you to the possibility of running out of income before you run out of retirement. And taking the lump sum may require a surviving spouse to continue to manage investments after you're, after you're gone. Okay, so let's look at the pros associated with taking the pension or the annuity option. An income annuity is longevity insurance. It's not an investment. Number one, the income is guaranteed monthly income. Number two, it's easy to understand and you don't have to manage any of the investment risks. You do have the risks of inflation, but you don't have to manage investment risks. Number three, if you have a history of longevity, the annuity might be better, especially if you're the type of person who tends to worry about the economy or or, or stock market volatility. Number four, a pension can provide guaranteed income for a spouse when you elect spousal benefits. Number five, fees are typically lower than they would be when investing the lump sum. Number six, some states tax pensions differently than they tax withdrawals from IRAs. And for a link to an article that shows you the 14 states that don't tax pension income, be sure to visit the show notes and click on episode number 403. Some of the negatives associated with taking the annuity slash the pension. Number one, you have dependency on the pension provider. The company paying the annuity could file for bankruptcy and cause your annuity to be reduced. Number two, there's a limited inheritance. The annuity ends at death or at the death of the second spouse, so there's nothing left for your heirs. 
Number three, you have inflation risk. In most instances, the annuity is fixed and does not increase with inflation, and there may be nothing left for your heirs. And number four, life expectancy. If you have a short life expectancy, your spending will be limited to the income received from the pension, whereas if you had taken the lump sum, you could spend all the money before your death. Here are the eight steps we take when helping people evaluate the pension versus the lump sum. Number one, we use the retirement budget calculator to determine the secure income score with or without a guaranteed pension income. Number two, we calculate the future value of the annuity payments. Number three, we calculate the present value of the annuity payments. Number four, we calculate the payout ratio. Number five, we run quotes from private insurance companies to see if we can get a better offer than that which is being offered by the employer. Number six, we understand how much, if any, of your annuity is covered by the PBGC. Number seven, we look at your plan's annual report to understand how well it's funded. And number eight, we use the retirement budget calculator to create multiple models and compare final account balances at life expectancy and also at age 100 so that we can see which option, the lump sum or the pension, provides the highest value to your estate at the second person's life expectancy. If you're trying to figure this out on your own, um, be sure to visit soundretirementplanning.com and click on episode number 403 and watch the video that's available. Finally, remember, retirement these retirement decisions should all be made in conjunction with all the other things you have to think about. You can't really make these decisions in isolation. You don't want to make them in a vacuum. You want to consider what are the benefits, the pros and the cons within the specifics of your retirement plan. Information and opinions expressed here are believed to be accurate and complete for general information only and should not be construed as specific tax, legal, or financial advice for any individual and does not constitute a solicitation for any securities or insurance products. Please consult with your financial professional before taking action on anything discussed in this program. Parker Financial, its representatives, or its affiliates have no liability for investment decisions or other actions taken or made by you based on the information provided in this program. All insurance related Related discussions are subject to the claims paying ability of the company. Investing involves risk. Jason Parker is the president of Parker Financial, an independent fee based wealth management firm located at 9057 Washington Avenue Northwest, Silverdale, Washington. For additional information, call 1 800 514 5046 or visit us online at soundretirementplanning.com.